in 1986, OutRun was released and revolutionized racing games. It was the first to offer AI drivers that moved at different speeds along the road. It offered branching paths. It came in a deluxe arcade cabinet with massive speakers, which tilted, giving the player a sense of actually driving a car. Kind of. It offered a choice of music tracks. Yes, OutRun was something very special back in 1986. As you can see, you control a Ferrari Testarossa Spider from a third-person rear perspective. The object of the game is to reach the finish line against the timer. Very simple, but there is more than one route. The game world is divided into multiple stages that each end in a checkpoint that, when passed, gives the player more time to race. The stages represent different difficulty levels and each conclude with their own ending scene. Among them, a Ferrari breaking down or being given a magical lamp only to wish to be surrounded by beautiful women. So here we go with the first ever port of OutRun and it was on the Sega Mark III, a machine that later became the Sega Master System. So how was the first ever port? Well it does feature all the arcade tracks, music and the Ferrari, but it doesn't feature the playability. The Mark III wasn't the most powerful of systems, however it was far more powerful than the Famicom and should have been able to do better than this. There are points such as the way the hills are implemented. They are slow and jerky, making it really tricky to move around on coming cars. The way the car's controls change when the overhead obstacles are present is also strange. Normally the car stays centered on the track, but once something overhead appears, the controls suddenly become super loose and it's the track which stays centered while the car moves left and right. Even back as a kid in 1987, I found this very strange. Still, despite its faults, I did have a lot of fun with the Mark III port as a kid. It's probably just nostalgia speaking, but I do kinda like this port. There was also a 3D version made. Same game, but with different tracks and new music. Normally, Game Gear versions are just cropped Master System Mark III ports, but not this one. First impressions are not good due to the lack of arcade presentation. No opening demo, no tune select by using the card's radio, just sad old menus. But then the game starts and you are presented to an awesome stereo rendition of the album music in PSG format. This really sounds good for a Game Gear. Then the game starts to play and you notice how smooth everything runs. This is what the Mark III Master System version should have been like. Sure, the areas in this Game Gear port have been altered, but that's okay. The game plays really well and full of fantastic touches, such as how the new areas fade into view, or the cool versus mode that has you race the CPU or an actual other human via the Game Gear link cable. If there had to be one criticism, it would be that the timer is a little too strict. But hey, maybe that'll make you play more and in turn, be a better player.
Get ready. Next up is the Mega Drive version, and ah, what an odd beast this is. Released the same year as the Game Gear 1, this port looks very much like the arcade machine. In fact, it's actually quite impressive at times. Unfortunately, the Mega Drive port runs at an uncapped frame rate. Now, 2D games on consoles like this mostly run at 60 frames per second locked. Only a few crappy games run at 30 frames per second, and you can really tell. Anyway, our run is all over the place. One moment it's buttery smooth, and the next it's jerking around. I'm sure you can tell just by watching this footage. On the plus side we do get the full arcade experience, even though it is based upon the Japanese layout. We also get an original music track, which sucks by the way, as I'm sure you can tell. Thankfully, the original three tunes are present and well done. There is a colour hack of the Mega Drive port out on the net, which improves the look to make the game resemble the arcade more, however it doesn't change how it plays, and that's a shame. with an intro like that. What the fuck? Who on earth in their right mind thought this was acceptable? I mean, come on. The Amiga port of Outrun is an abomination. It's an insult to even put the Outrun name on the single frame per second flipbook effort of a game. Totally unplayable. Stupidly tight timer, terrible graphics that don't resemble the original, awful music, and a Ferrari that sounds more like a poorly maintained F1 car. Truly awful. And onto the Atari ST version, which is the exact same crap as the Amiga, but at least this version moves in a fashion we can call movement, and not still images. Make no mistake though, this is still a very bad game. All the same problems that the Amiga has, but moving smoother. Oh, I guess I should point out that the music is better, but I guess you can hear that.
So we know that Probe were behind the Atari ST and Amiga pathetic attempts, but can they do anything better for the 8-bit systems? <laughs> what do you think? Just look at this laughable attempt on the Amstrad CPC. Now I do applaud the large sprites and colourful graphics, but where is the sound? And more importantly, where is the gameplay? There is none. The road seems static at times and when you are moving, it can be difficult to notice. What a load of crap. Again, more crap from Probe Software, but at least this ZX Spectrum port has some points to like about it. For a start, the rendition of the various Outrun themes are really well done. I do like what they have produced here. I also like the big car models, but that's about all I like. The game is the same as the Amstrad CPC, but now at least looks as if you're moving. Sadly, the game is horrible to play. Other cars can at times teleport in front of you, while at others they can completely block the road. The controls don't help either thanks to their sluggish response time. Yet another disappointment. <laughs> So Probe had nothing to do with the Commodore 64 version of Outrun and it shows. This was developed by Amazing Studios and it's a million times better than the garbage Probe software put out. We get arcade presentation, a classic striped road and a reasonable game. This is by no means a great port of Outrun, but it is playable and it is a hell of a lot more fun than the other western home micros. Okay, if we are to be honest, the Western home computer ports were awful, but how about the Japanese home computers? Well, here we have the MSX2 port by the pretty shoddy developer, Pony Canyon. And yeah, this port lives up to Pony Canyon's reputation. It's quite a shoddy port. I mean, it does have its plus points, such as nice colour and reasonable sound, but it just lacks in the playability department. It also suffers from the same issue as the Master System game, whereby the road would sometimes stay still and the car would suddenly dart left or right. It is worse on the MSX2 port however, as it seems to happen on every straight bit of track. So far, all the western made versions of this game have been awful, too poor. Mostly thanks to the crap efforts of Probe Software. 
The PC version on the other hand is a whole lot better. Yeah, it still has the stupid push up to accelerate and pull back to brake control method which does make precise movements an impossible task. However, it plays well considering the control restriction. It also moves at a good pace, looks nice and sounds reasonable for the PC internal speaker game. This port can run in EGA, Tandy 16 color mode or 16 color VGA mode, which is what you're seeing now. Here we go with another 8-bit port, this time for the PC Engine. And yes, the PC Engine is 8-bit. It's a souped up 8-bit at that, but 8-bit all the same. Any idiot claiming it's 16-bit because of the graphics chip or because the US machine is called the TurboGrafx-16 is going to have a shitty nappy or diaper for American English speakers shoved into their face. Anyway, back to the game. Yes. PC Engine Outrun is amazing for an 8-bit port. It's very fast, has big sprites and is relatively smooth. It sure does put up a good running against the Mega Drive version. It's just a shame the engine sound effect is pretty bad. So bad that NEC who did this port even gives you the option to switch off the engine notes. Found upon the Sega Arcade Gallery, a collection of fairly poor Sega Arcade ports is Outrun. So how does this stack up to the likes of the Mega Drive? Well, it's a mixed bag. Outrun is probably the best game on the collection, but because it was developed by Bitscorp, you know something is wrong. It's a shame because I really want to like this one. It makes excellent use of the GBA's hardware scaling. It sounds good and despite the low resolution, it looks like OutRun should look. So what's the problem? Well, it's the controls. They are just too sensitive, yet floaty. It feels as if you are driving on ice. The game also loves to fling you off to the side if you slightly nudge another car, resulting in crashes more often than should be the case. Okay, let's move on to the more powerful console starting with the Sega Saturn. Now this port is even better than the arcade and well, every other version so far. Why is that? Well, the arcade original ran at 30 frames per second. This Sega Saturn port also runs at 30 frames per second and is practically arcade perfect. So how is that better? I can hear you asking. Well, if you go to the options, you can choose to play the overseas version or the Japanese version of the game. Nice, but that's not what makes this better. What makes this better than the arcade is the fact we can choose overseas smooth 
or Japan Smooth. No, this isn't some crappy graphical filter. The Smooth mode gives us 60 frames per second. Yes, that's right. Twice the frame rate of the arcade original and even the Dreamcast port. You may have also noticed the different music. Of course, you can choose the original arcade music, but for those wanting something with a little more beat, there's the option to select remixed versions of the three main arcade music tracks. Next up is the Sega Dreamcast port. Just like the Saturn version, this features digital or analog controls, which give it the edge over other ports. As you can see, it's basically arcade perfect, apart from the Sega signs being changed to Shenmue and the Ferrari now being something else. It even runs at 30 frames per second like the arcade, but sadly missing the Saturn's 60 frames per second option or any option come to think of it. This version of Outrun is also the same that appears on Shenmue. However, this particular version I'm using comes from Yu Suzuki's Game Works Volume 1, which also includes Hang On Afterburner 2 and Power Drift. In the early 2000s, many of Sega's classic games were remade for the PlayStation 2 with mixed results, until M2 came on board. Outrun was a game that came before M2's involvement, but does that mean it's bad? Well, some may not like the less than vibrant colours, and others may be disappointed that the game runs in interlaced mode. However, it does run at 60 frames per second, and has analogue as well as digital controls. It also has an option to custom the cornering speed. What I'm trying to say is Outrun on the PlayStation 2 is actually a very good game. It feels great. The controls are precise, the speed is fast, and the newly arranged soundtrack rocks. Of course, the original soundtrack is also available, but now has a wider stereo separation. There's even an arranged mode that has you racing against a rival just like in Outrun 2. This mode can feel like a strange hybrid of original Outrun and Outrun 2. Plays like Outrun, but has features of Outrun 2. Needless to say, it's pretty good. Now here's something really cool, this is known as Cannonball, most likely named after the Cannonball films. What we have here is a fully reprogrammed version of Outrun. This is not emulation of the arcade machine. This port, if you can call it that, features many cool extras such as 60 frames per second gameplay, smoother than the original game, true widescreen mode, high resolution mode to improve sprite scaling, above and first person camera views, time trial mode, continuous mode, western, japanese and prototype track support, support for custom tracks, customizable music, 
force feedback, haptic support and more. Finally, let's end with M2's fantastic 3DS port of Outrun, which as you guessed it, can run in 3D. Basically, this is an arcade perfect port with many bells and whistles, such as 60 frames per second speed, 2 extra original music tracks, save states and stage select. If you've ever wanted to play Outrun on the move, then this is the only way it should be done. Let's take a look at all those versions of Outrun running side by side.